Hi, my name is Roland Morris, and I'm a solutions engineer with Okta. Today, I want to talk to you about workflows, and I have a use case around temporary group memberships that I want to share with you. So I'm going to be doing this within the workflows tool, and I've imported the flow pack that you can see here uh, with three different workflows. First, a little bit about the background. Why would I want temporary group memberships? So within Okta, we can assign users to a group, which in turn gives them single sign-on access to applications, or that may trigger lifecycle management provisioning to applications or even directories. So by assigning someone access to it, we're giving them entitlements and access. But what if we only want that for a short period of time, such as maybe giving an auditor access for five business dates? Or maybe we wanted to give access to a developer to a project for 30 days and then have it automatically revoked. So using this workflows um, import that I've created here, we're able to assign someone access to a group and then we're able to revoke that access in an automated fashion uh, after the duration that we've specified for that group expires. So let me show you a little bit about these. I've imported them here. The first thing I'm going to do is turn them on. So there, there are three different flows, and they're all turned on now. Uh, there's two that are really the entry points. One of them is when a user is added to a group from Okta, it's going to use an event hook, event hook and notify workflows that a user was added. So that's going to trigger this flow. The other flow is Periodically, depending on the duration, probably it's going to be hours or days every day, we're, we're going to want to go and scan the users that have been given access to these groups and remove them as necessary when their uh, expiration date or, or a date that we've determined that they should be removed has passed. And so that's, what, that's where this one comes in. And this would typically be done on a scheduled event. So let's look, run through this flow and we'll go deeper into it as we go. To run this, I need some groups that I'm gonna be designating as temporary group memberships. So I've created three of them here called temp auditor permissions, temp no access, and temp project X. What I need to do is let workflows know that these are the groups that I want to monitor, and then also um, what is the duration that we want to have in them. So if I go over here to tables, I can say uh, temporary groups, these tables were imported with the flow also, and this is currently empty. This is where I'm gonna go and insert the names of those groups. So I'll just copy these. Temporary group, uh, temporary auditor permissions. And for this one, I'm gonna use one. Now the unit of time here is set to minutes for testing purposes, uh, but I'll show you a little bit later on where you can change the duration units uh, probably you would want to make this hours or days, depending on the granularity that you want. So we've created that one. Let me get the second one. And this one's called Temp No Access. This is an example that I was going to put in here just to show you that um, if anyone is added to this group, I want them removed. And so I'm going to put a duration of zero in there. And the final one is called Temp Project X. This one is the longer duration project, and the group membership will have a, um, a duration of uh, 10 minutes. All right, so from here, I'll put in Temp Project X, and I'll set the duration to 10 minutes and hit Create. So now I've got my three group names associated with durations. Um, and what we'll do is we'll go back and look at the flow one more time to see what's gonna happen when these run. So when I add users to the groups, it's gonna trigger this flow, user added to group. We're using the Okta event hook to say users added to group. This is a uh, an option on the card. I've selected my Okta tenant here so that it's associated uh, with the connection that I've created for my Okta tenant. And the way this works is it passes in information of the user that was added to the group and what's information about the group. 
What we want to do is search that table. So I'll pass in the display name, trim it to make sure there's no extra spaces. And then as part of the where condition, I'll search for that group within that table. If it comes back and it finds the row, I'll also retrieve the duration. This is just testing, did we actually get a row back? And then the last piece here is around creating the expiration date. So I'm gonna go get the current date and time, add the duration that was set up for that particular group. And you can see the, the units here is minutes. This is where I would change it to hours or days. Convert it to a Unix timestamp and then create a, a row in another table. This one's the user table of the user ID, the group ID that they were added to, and when does that membership expire? So let's run this and see how it looks. The flow is turned on. So I'm gonna go into the temp auditor permissions, say manage people and add a user. I'm going to add Scott McKinney. And then I'm going to the temp project X and I'll add Sophia. And then the temp no access. And I'll add Joe. So three groups and I've added three people to those groups. I come back and look at just those groups. You can see there's three people associated with those three groups. So now on the workflow side, we should have had some activity. So let's go into the flow history and see if this fired. So you can see there's three, three uh, executions of it. And in each one of these executions, the, uh, the group was found as we expected. We were looking for temp project X and we found it in the table with the appropriate duration, calculated the expiration date, and inserted the IDs and the expiration timestamp. Same thing for the next one. This was temp no access with a duration of zero and temp auditor permissions with a duration of one. So, this has now created three rows in the user table. Let's take a look at that. I'll go and look at the tables. So users added to temporary groups, there's three records in it. And so now you, you can see we're tracking three different users that have been added to, in this case, three different groups and uh, expiration timestamps of when those would be, should be removed. So the next half of this is, discovering the expiration dates and removing the users from the group. So to do that, we have scan users for removal. And then this case, again, this would be set up on a schedule. You could do this uh, by the minute, by the hour, daily, weekly, or monthly, depending on the granularity of the duration of the group memberships, you'd wanna set this appropriately. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna run it ad hoc here and hit test. But the way that this works is it's going to um, figure out what is the current timestamp. It'll search that user table to see uh, any, any expiration timestamps that have passed. If so, retrieve those, uh, that information and pass it into a subflow, the user ID, group ID, uh, and the row ID so we can clean it up. And that's the purpose of this other subflow. So this is the child flow that gets called user group row. We're gonna remove the user from the group using the Okta card, make sure we've also selected the correct Okta connection here, and then clean up the user table by removing that row ID that was passed in. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and run this. I could hit run here, or I can also hit test when the flow is open. I'm just gonna hit run here and click test. All right, so that did run and it shows, um, that one user was detected and one user was removed. Let's go back and look at the tables here and refresh this. So you can see the temp no access, the user was removed and the temp auditor permission, uh, the user was removed also. 
Um, so both of these had, this one had the one minute access, I'm sorry, the auditor permissions had a one minute access, the temp no access had a zero time, so it was gonna be removed. Just the next time that scan was run at any point, it would always remove them. And then temp project X, Sophia is still within this project because um, that was set for 10 minutes. So at, a, at another point when I, when I rerun that scan, it's going to um, go in and remove her from this group also. So I hope you can see the benefits of using uh, timed group memberships and also how this workflow is able to be dynamically configured based on groups and the durations for ind independently of those groups. Uh, and they're just set up on a schedule to go and scan them. So I hope you found this uh, useful. Thank you for your time.